Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain what is your face safe king with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I will discuss about basics of QPSK. After that, I will explain QPSK modulator, QPSK waveforms, QPSK demodulator, QPSK constellation diagram, and at last, I will discuss about advantages, disadvantages and applications of QPSK. So let us start this video with first agenda. That is basics of QPSK. See, QPSK is quadrature phase shift key. So that is a category of phase shift key. Right. So QPSK is a type of PSK modulation. PSK means phase shift key. So here modulation will be there with respect to change in phase of carrier, right? So in QPSK, we will be having phase shift king that is also known as 4PSK. Why the reason is in QPSK, we have in total four symbols. So with QPSK, we have in total four symbols. That's why it is also known as 4PSK. There are in total four different symbols. Each symbol represents two bits. One should know if you have four symbols, then two to the power two, that is four, means with each symbol, we will be having two bits of digital data, right? In PSK, we will be having different phase with each symbol, right? So QPSK has four symbols. With each symbol, there has to have different phase. And that phase that is bisected as per 360 degree divided by 4. So if you say with first symbol, we have 0 degree. Then with next symbol, there will be 90 degree. After that with next symbol, we will be having 180 degree. And then we will be having 270 degree. If you have first symbol that is having phase of 45 degree, then next will be having 45 plus 90 that is 135. Then next is having 135 plus 90, that is 225. And then next is having 225 plus 90, that is 315 degree. So that is how with the separation of 90 degree, there are in total four symbols, right? See, QPSK allows signal to carry twice as much information compared to ordinary BPSK. The reason is in BPSK, we have two symbols. With each symbol, we have one bit. While in QPSK, we have four symbols. So with each symbol, we have two bits. So with each symbol, we have twice of the information compared to BPSK. And here with QPSK, there will be same bandwidth as it is there with BPSK. So QPSK allows twice of the information compared to BPSK while using same bandwidth, right? If you have carrier signal that is A cos omega CT, then in QPSK, if you consider four different symbols with a phase of 0, 90, 180 and 270, then here we have four different phase. You can observe A cos omega CT plus 0, A cos omega CT plus 90, A cos omega CT plus 180, A cos omega CT plus 270. With this first symbol, Equivalent digital data can be 0, 0. With the second symbol, it will be 1, 0. With this third symbol, it will be 0, 1. And with this fourth symbol, it will be 1, 1. So that is how four symbols are there. Each symbol is having different phase. Now I'll explain you QPSK modulator. In QPSK modulator, first of all, we convert serial digital data into two bit parallel data. Let me explain you how. See here we have serial digital data input. Let us consider this serial digital data is 0, 3, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this serial digital data that we convert into two bit parallel data. See here odd bits that we give it to BPSK Q channel and even bits that we give it to BPSK I channel. To understand odd and even bits, First of all, you need to know the location of the serial data. Let us consider location starts from 
zero. So here we have location from zero one two three four five six seven. Now this serial digital data that will go inside bit splitter, and it will be giving odd bits to BBSKQ channel and even bits to BBSKI channel. So here locations which are there as per zero two four six. So that is carrying even bits that we give it to BPSKI channel and locations those are one three five seven. So that is having odd bits that we give it to BPSKQ channel, right? Now see this digital data that is given to BPSK modulator binary phase shift king modulator I channel and Q channel. See with I channel here we have carrier signal that we generate by using local oscillator. See this carrier signal that has to be cos omega ct that is given to BPSK I channel directly. So here we will be having cos omega ct and after 90 degree phase it is given to BPSK Q channel. So here we will be having sin omega ct right. So with respect to cos here modulation will be there with I channel and with respect to sine, there will be modulation with Q channel. Now, how it will do modulation? So here, if you have digital data that is 0, 0, means with I channel we have 0 and with Q channel we have 0. So what will be modulated signal? Simply it will be cos with cos over here and sine with sine over here. If you have digital data that is 0, 1, then with I channel we have 0 and with Q channel, we have 1 over here. So as if you have 1, then here 180 degree phase is generated by this Q channel means minus sign will be there, right? As carrier to this Q channel is sign. So after 180 degree phase shift, there will be minus. If you observe 1, 0 digital data, then 1 is given to I channel and 0 is given to Q channel. So as per logic 1 over here, 180 degree phase with cos omega ct will be minus cos omega ct over here and logic 0 with q channel that is resulting into sin omega ct over here. If both are 1 then here minus cos and over here minus sin will be there and that we add and we will be having QPSK output. So we will be observing this QPSK output that will be having 0 phase as if digital data is 0 0 and it will be having 180 degree phase if digital data is 0 1 for 1 0 it will be having 90 degree phase and for 1 1 it will be having 270 degree phase right so that is how modulation happens now let me explain waveforms so here in waveforms see we have a carrier signal that is sinusoidal signal right so here you need to consider sinusoidal carrier right here we have a digital data what we do First of all, we will be converting serial into parallel 2 bit digital data. So you will have to combine slot of 2 bits, right? So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, that is how digital data is there. Now as if digital data is 0, 0, then if you observe QPSK phase is 0. So same carrier that will appear over here along with zero phase. If digital data is 0, 1, then with 0, 1, 180 degree phase is there. So with 180 degree phase, one should know signal should start from here, right? Here we have 180 degree. So you can observe, see from here onward signal is starting, right? From here onward signal is starting with 180 degree phase, right? If you have 10 digital data, then with 10 digital data, we have 90 degree phase. So one should know, see 90 degree that comes over here, right? See here we have a 0 degree and here we have 90 degree. So signal should start from maximum. So you can observe here signal is starting from maximum and it is going over here. Again signal is starting from maximum and it is going over here, right? For 10. If it is 1 1, then with 1 1, phase is 270 degree, right? And one should know, see 270 degree phase, see that is happening over here. 
See here we have 0, here we have 90, here we have 180 and over here we have 270 degree. So signal should start from here. So you can observe it is starting from here onwards, right? See in case of 1, 1. Again it is starting from here, 4, 1, 1, right? And for 0, 0, it will be starting from here onwards, right? So you can observe that is how waveforms are plotted, right? Now let me explain QPSK demodulator. See in QPSK demodulator, here we have a QPSK signal and that signal that I have already told you that is having phase as per this digital data, right? Now this signal that we give it to I channel and Q channel phase shift key and this is about demodulator, right? If you observe with I channel, this carrier signal that is directly given. What is this carrier signal? That is cos of omega ct. So that is directly given over here. And after 90 degree phase, here we will be having sine of omega ct. And then we perform demodulation. So in demodulation with I channel, which bits are there? So with I channel, if you observe, even bits are there, right? So here with I channel, there will be demodulated signal. Right, here we will be having demodulated I channel and I is associated with even bits. Right, that we have already seen, you see. With I channel we have even bits. So here we have demodulated I channel even bits. That we give it to low pass filter and after that we generate square wave. So here we will be having digital data that we give it to even bits and here with Q channel carrier is sine and here we have demodulated signal and that we give it to low pass filter. After square wave generator here we will be having digital information that we give it to orbits and here we have two bit parallel to serial converter. So here we will be having output that is serial data. So that is how demodulation that happens. Now let me explain constellation diagram. See in constellation diagram, one can observe, see there is I channel that is in phase. One should know I channel is in phase. Why the reason is here we are talking about carrier and what is carrier? Carrier is cos omega ct. So I channel, you can observe I channel that is having cos omega ct and Q channel that is having sin omega ct. So here, see this vertically, we have I channel that is cos omega ct and horizontally we have Q channel that is quadrature phase means sin omega ct, right? Now, see if you have 0, 0, then I and Q both should be positive. So you can observe in first quadrant, both values are positive for 0, 0. And for 1, 1, both values are negative, you can observe. If you have 0, 1, then I channel is positive, but Q channel is negative. And if you have 1, 0 symbol, then this Q channel is positive, but I channel is negative. Now, if you observe carefully, this is gray coding. In gray coding, you will be observing for opposite bits, there will be largest hamming distance. Like if you observe 0, 0, then opposite to that, that is 1, 1. So here, for opposite bits, maximum hamming distance is there. If you have 0, 1, then opposite is 1, 0. Then here we have maximum hamming distance. So gray coding, that will be providing better error immunity. So as and when we do QPSK modulation, at the time we should apply gray coding that is resulting into maximum hamming distance right so this is about constellation diagram right now let me discuss about advantages see it is having higher data rate compared to bpsk one should know with bpsk with bpsk we have one bit per symbol right while with qpsk we have two bits per 
symbol. So, but obviously, here we have higher data rate with QPSK, right? It is having better power efficiency compared to 16 QAM. I'll explain you how to generate QAM, right? Right now, consider it is having better power efficiency compared to 16 QAM. And due to gray coding, we have reduced error with QPSK, right? If you talk about disadvantages, then here we have complex receiver design and it is sensitive to phase noise and non-linearities. If you talk about applications, then in wireless communication, widely we use, we use it in 3G signals, we use it in LTE and Wi-Fi. It is also useful in deep space communication as well as we use it for military and secured radio communication. So that is how QPSK is so essential. I hope you are enjoying my videos. Still, if you have any confusion, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.